Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm back here with another project for Not Too Shabby. Today I'm going to be using the Flower Girl stamp set, and this is a new stamp set by Doodlebug, and I'm just going to be using this one image here. Now I'm taking my piece of cardstock here, and this is Nina Solar White cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter, and I'm just using the grid mat and my ruler here to kind of draw straight lines vertically and horizontally so that I can mark the center of my card panel here. And then I'm gonna take one of the smallest scalloped circle dies, and this is by Spellbinders, and I'm just tracing that with my pencil. It's not gonna be perfect, I just kind of need a guide as to where I'm going to be stamping. I'm gonna stamp this image multiple times, and I'm using Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because it's a Copic Safe ink. And I'm starting by stamping one on the top, one on the bottom, and then I'm gonna fill in two on either side to kind of make a circle of this image. And I'm using those pencil lines that I have drawn out as my guide. So once that was stamped out, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of my pencil lines. You wanna do this before you start your coloring. And we're gonna keep the coloring very simple. The only shading that I did was for the little bows. And quite honestly, I stamped these so close together that it didn't really make too much, it didn't make any difference at all actually because they ended up being covered up quite a bit. So I'm just kind of going through and picking some pastel springy colors and picking some yellows and purples and light pinks and things like that to color all of my images in solid. Now I'm coloring each one of them the exact same. So I started with that light V marker and I colored all of those little circle looking flowers all exactly the same and I'm just paying attention to make sure that I color each one of them the same. To be quite honest with you, if you happen to miss one, it's not the end of the world. I don't think anybody's going to really look at it that hard to, to make sure that each one of them is colored exactly the same. And for the little centers of the flowers, for the teeny tiny ones, I totally skipped it. I just colored directly over them. Some of these are really, really tiny and you can, I don't know whether you guys can see on camera or not, but I definitely went over the, out of the lines <laughs> or I had a little bit of bleeding for those little tiny ones. Now you'll just wanna, for the little tiny areas, you basically just wanna touch the tip of the marker to the paper. The alcohol ink will spread a little bit. It's probably not noticeable to the eye for a larger image, but for a teeny tiny one, let the alcohol ink spread a little bit. And if you have to go back in and, and fix up any areas, you can certainly do that. But it's better to put too little on than too much and then have to worry about taking it away. So moving on to the Y38, and this is a yellow, but it's more of an orangey color. So I'm going to bring in a darker orange, and this is a true orange. It's a YR marker, just to fill in the centers of those flowers because the centers are a lot larger than the other ones, and they'd be noticeable if it was all just one solid color. Now we're going to move on to what I thought was going, I was going to color the um, little hearts with the RV32, but it was a little bit too light. I wanted my hearts to be a little bit darker than my flowers, so I ended up not using that for my heart, but I had already colored in one. Because Copics are transparent, if you decide that you want something a little bit darker, you can always add it directly over it and you'll never know the difference that you had a lighter color under that. So moving on to these next flowers here, these larger flowers, I'm coloring in the entire thing, again, going directly over the center part of the flower. I'll fill that in with a darker color in a minute just because it is a larger area like i said for the teeny tiny ones i didn't bother i'm going to bring in my r85 i believe it was for the center of those flowers and i'm also going to leave that out because that's going to be one of the colors that i use for the shading of the little bows as well and i'll only show you one of those but i did very very basic shading so for the little hearts, I am going to bring in a little bit darker of a pink. I'm going to bring in the R83, which I'll also be using for the bows as well. Now again, some of these little teeny tiny hearts, they are very teeny tiny. So you'll want to make sure that you're just barely touching the tip of the marker to the paper. And as you can kind of see, I didn't really stamp these perfectly. 
I didn't use a stamp positioner for this. You certainly could. I know there's wreath builders, stencils, or guides out there that you can use for a technique like this, but I figured being I'm only using one image, I could just do this by hand. And once I add my sentiment, you're not gonna be able to tell that this is not a perfect circle. So for the little leaves, they're, they're kind of spread out throughout the little bouquet there. I'm just gonna go in again solid with that YG06. There's also some stems hanging down from the bottom of the bouquet. I did fill these in, again, not necessary the way that I stamped it just because it's not gonna be able to be seen once everything is said and done. And once that was done, we'll move on to the little bows. And again, I'm gonna be using those R80 markers. And being these are such teeny tiny areas and there's really not any other shading going on here, I'm gonna go right in with my darkest color and just add a little bit of shading on where the bow is kind of bunched in the center and behind the front part of the bow is kind of like a double bow and just a little bit down the little ribbons that are hanging down, blending that out with the R83 and then finally blending the rest of that out with the R81. And I colored all of those the same exact way, same color combination. So once all of my coloring was complete, we'll move on to the sentiment and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this out onto another piece of Nina Solar White. And I'm gonna be using Fresh Peach Ink by Hero Arch just because I felt like this matched a lot of the colors that I used within the little bouquets. Gonna go ahead and stamp that out and then take that same Spellbinders die, center that right around my sentiment. I'm just gonna hold this down with some post-it note tape while I run this through my Gemini. Next, I kind of laid that down and realized it was a little too plain. It didn't pop up from the background, being the background is just plain white. And I wanted to keep this really clean and simple. So I decided to take a blendability brush. This is by Trinity Stamps. I know a lot of people use like makeup brushes and things like that. And I'm just dabbing this off on that scrap piece of paper because I want this to be very light. And I'm just adding a little bit of color to the center of my little circle there going directly over my images because I know it's not gonna change the color of them too much. And I liked that much better, it did pop up. But I needed even more color, it was just too much white space. So I ended up trimming this down on all four sides so that my images would still be centered. And I'm taking a quarter of an inch off of each side. And then I'm taking another piece of Nina Solar White and I'm cutting this down to five and a quarter by four. So it's a little bit smaller than a A2 size card, but a little bit larger than my main card panel. And I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending on this too to match the rest of my sentiment and all of that. So I'm using that same blendability brush and that same fresh peach ink. And I'm just dabbing off a little bit on my scrap paper and then bringing that to the card panel itself. And I'm starting off in the center because I want that to be the darkest area. I don't want too much ink going on the outside of my, the card panel, being that is the part that you're going to see. So I don't want it to be too blotchy. I laid my card panel on and I just needed a little bit more color. It was a little bit too light. So I just went in over that same area again, one more layer. The great thing about using these brushes is that you can add as little or as much ink as, as you want. You can get a nice, soft, subtle look, or you can make it really bold and bright. In this case, I did want it to be pretty soft. So I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my main panel directly onto that ink blended panel to just create a little bit of a border there. And then I'm gonna take some fun foam to adhere that entire thing to an A2 size note card. I'm using my ATG gun. I find this works very good with foam, but it doesn't necessarily stick to it very good. You can see that I kind of struggled a little bit, sticks to my finger and then kind of gets all bunched up and then all over the place. I don't know whether you guys have problems with your ATG gun, but I certainly do. I cut my fun foam just a little bit too big, so I had to kind of squeeze my scissors in there to take off some excess that was kind of sticking up there. As long as you don't go right to the edge, you shouldn't have a problem snipping off any excess. And then I'll use that the ATG gun again to adhere this to my A2 size note card, and I do add a little bit of adhesive in the center as well so that it doesn't create kind of like a bubble. Once everything was adhered together, I took a small piece of scotch foam tape to pop up my little sentiment circle right there in the center of my little 
bouquets, I guess. <laughs> but that is it for today, guys. Don't forget about the discount code and thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.